This week on Empowering Midlife Wellness, I'm talking about continuous glucose monitors and particularly discussing this new product called Stello, which is the non-prescription CGM. I'm wearing one right now, how it's worked for me and how it works for our patients. Hi friends and welcome to this week's episode. If you're just joining me, I'm Dr. Susan. I'm a board certified gynecologist and certified menopause practitioner dedicated to taking care of women in midlife, specifically around menopause and beyond so that we can feel great now and also set up the healthiest elderly version of ourselves because of course that starts today. So one of the most important things that we all struggle with in midlife, including me, is some form of weight gain around the middle metabolic dysfunction, meaning some alteration in our sugar control, even prediabetes or diabetes. And all of that can be lumped together into a decrease in sensitivity to the hormone insulin. Most of you know by now about this condition that we call insulin resistance. And just the mere change in our hormones as we age around menopause causes us to be less sensitive to insulin. So insulin resistance in some form, somewhere on the spectrum, is normal in quotation marks for women our age. It's certainly not optimal though. Not only does it cause us to gain fat around the middle, nobody likes that, but it increases our risk of other diseases like diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's. So we really want to get our arms around that. Now I made a video a couple months ago about insulin resistance that you might want to refer to to get some more information about the condition itself. But today I want to talk about how we can monitor our sugar, specifically about the over-the-counter continuous glucose monitor that's now available and what my experience has been with using it and what my experience has been with our patients using it. So how do we know what our blood sugar is unless we check it? Well, we don't really. Now one can assume that if we eat a bunch of sugar, our sugar is going to go up, of course. And if we don't eat sugar and carbohydrates, we will maintain a lower blood sugar. But when you go to the doctor, typically we will check it fasting. Now, it's a really great idea to have your doctor check your fasting glucose, your fasting insulin, hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of your blood sugar over the past approximately three months, as well as some other markers like your triglycerides, uric acid, to get an idea of what your sugar control is during the day. And another way to do it is just to check it multiple times during the day. And the way that can be done is with a continuous glucose monitor. So I am wearing one right now. You might have seen people in the community walking around with a sticker on the back of their arm. If you see that, that's what that is. They're wearing a CGM, or continuous glucose monitor. Until very recently, you could assume that patient was diabetic because diabetic patients have been using these for years. And until just a couple of months ago, they've only been covered by insurance if you're diabetic and only been available by prescription. But we now have one that's available over the counter, so absolutely anyone can get one, and it's a really cool idea to consider if you're struggling with fat around the middle or if you need some help and accountability because I can tell you what this thing acts as an accountability partner and I'll talk to you about that. So I want to talk to you today about Stello. I have no affiliation with Dexcom, the manufacturer of Stello, but this is the so far only not by prescription CGM that's available. So Several of my providers and I got them to try them out, and I want to talk to you about my experience with them today. First of all, let me tell you what happens when you wear this thing. So you get a little box like this. Inside the box is the monitor with a little device that presses it into your skin. So this is a little flat pad, as you can see, and underneath it, when you peel it off, it has multiple tiny thread size needles, which actually go into your tissue, not into a blood vessel, and is able to measure what's called interstitial sugar. It's not actually blood sugar because this is not going into a blood vessel. It's going into the tissue itself. Studies have shown that the glucose level in the blood versus in the interstitial tissue is relatively similar. So it's a good proxy to blood sugar without actually getting into a blood vessel. Doesn't hurt to put it on in studies done looking at patient perception. Most people rate it a one out of 10 on a pain scale. When I put mine on, I generally didn't even feel it. It's like a little tiny pinch. And then it's covered with a sticker that should keep it intact for up to two weeks. So each of these can last as long as 14 days. 
Now, depending on your activity level, in my case, I'm lucky if I can get it to last for seven because I swim and do a lot of exercise, but it's gonna last a good long time, enough to give you a good idea of what your sugar is during the day. So this uses Bluetooth to go to your phone and you'll get a reading every 15 minutes and you'll be able to see what happens to your sugar during the day and how that varies based on what you eat. So a fun idea is to do some experiments. What I recommend when patients first wear a CGM is just do what you normally do for 48 hours and then look at the data and see what happens. What we would like to see is that your fasting sugar is somewhere between 70 and 90. That means before you eat, it should be an average of 80, plus or minus. After meals, within the first two hours after eating, we really don't ever want it over 140. Ideally, we would not want it over 120. So if you wanted to be perfect, we would have an average sugar of 100 with ranges from say 70 or 80 up to the 120s. If you're seeing sugars that are much higher than that, what we can do is backtrack, see what we ate, either eliminate that food or pad it with something that reduces its absorption. So for example, I did an experiment. I'll show you the result. I tried some of these things that we might think are healthy snacks. Now, have you seen the new Smart Sweets? They're quite delicious for those of us who love gummy snacks. I was pretty suspicious of Smart Sweets. I wasn't quite sure if you could eat a bag of candy and not have it make your sugar go up, even though it's made with stevia and other natural products. So I ate a bag of Smart Sweets. My interstitial sugar went up to 190 in the first hour. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we just have to fact check what advertisers are telling us. Now, a different occasion, I did the same thing and then I went for a run. Well, it dropped much more quickly than it did when I did not do any exercise. If I had eaten a bag of Smart Sweets after I had eaten a rich protein meal, like a piece of salmon or a couple of boiled eggs, I would have seen my sugar go up much less. So in other words, you can do experiments where you're eating your particular food and then trying different things. And those would be, again, either removing that food if it's just not gonna work. So I'm taking Smart Sweets off my list of things to eat. There was nothing I could do to keep my sugar under 140 after a bag of Smart Sweets. Nothing at all, <laughs> and I tried, because I really like them. So eliminating the food is, is obviously number one. Or if there's a particular food that you just love and you want to keep a little bit of it in your daily nutrition plan, exercise. That is gonna drop your sugar quickly because sugar will be stored in your muscle, not only burned up during that exercise, but also it opens up channels for the sugar to be able to go into your muscle to be stored for later use. Or eat that food with or after having protein and fiber, and that's going to dampen the degree to which the sugar is absorbed. So you'll still, still see the sugar go up, but it'll be a little bit less of a spike and more of a slow curve. So after a few days of doing these experiments, you're gonna learn very quickly which of the foods you're eating spike your sugar and which don't. For example, if I eat a handful of almonds, nothing happens to my sugar. It will be 80 and it will stay at 80. If I eat a boiled egg, same thing. My sugar will stay exactly the same. If I eat a piece of salmon with some brown rice, it'll go up a little, maybe to 120 and then it'll come back down within two or three hours. We can do these experiments and learn how to keep our sugar in normal range. Again, going back to the why, the point of all of this is so that we don't have a spike in insulin. It's actually the spike in insulin that we're more worried about than the spike in sugar. But as of today, we do not have a continuous insulin monitor. Those are in the works of being created and that'll be an even closer approximation to what's going on in our body. You can imagine that insulin is spiking just a little bit after that sugar spike or right around the same time. And I always like to do this visualization. If we're having an insulin spike, that is our body trying to get the sugar out of our blood because it's a very clever hormone that wants to keep our blood sugar normal. It's going to look for places to store that sugar and one of its favorite places is in our adipose tissue. So if our goal is to not store fat, or especially if we're trying to lose fat, we want to eliminate those glucose spikes. So once again, Stello, it's really inexpensive compared to the 
prescription ones at least. Uh, prescription Dexcom 7, for example, which is a prescription for diabetics primarily, would cost you something like $250 at the pharmacy for less than a month's supply. Stello is $99 for two of these things. Now, they will last up to 30 days, as I mentioned in my case, more like two weeks, but we don't necessarily need to wear it forever. If you're somebody like me who's not diabetic, you might just wear it for a couple of weeks and then you're going to learn those lessons well enough to apply them going forward. You'll just know what works and what doesn't. Another great benefit of wearing a CGM is it's a powerful accountability partner. In our weight loss program, patients who choose to wear a CGM versus those who don't lose more weight not because they're wearing a CGM in particular, but because it helps to remind them not to eat that certain food that could get them in trouble. We all know that when we're being watched, we behave better, right? So in that way, it's watching you. It's gonna send a message to your phone. In our case, our weight loss patients are gonna be asked to show us that data. We're not gonna judge you, but people always wanna give us good data and be a good student. And so it just reminds you to stick to the plan that you already know is the right plan for you. So great accountability partner. It does change behavior because when we're being watched, we behave better. Most importantly for long term, it gives us education about what foods spike our sugar and which ones don't. And going back to my experiment with smart sweets, there are countless healthy foods that are just a bunch of carbohydrates. Now, for example, a bag of Smart Sweets has 40 grams of carbohydrates. Sure, it's not pure sugar, but your body doesn't actually know the difference when you eat it. So don't be fooled by these things. There are countless protein bars that have 40 or 50 grams of carbohydrates, plus or minus a ton of sugar. So now granted, if you're eating protein with sugar, that will dampen the glucose spike somewhat, but give it a try. <laughs> if you have some treats that you really like, it's not going to hurt you to play with your sugar for a few days while you're wearing a CGM to figure out what works. So just as a reminder, ideally we'd have your average blood sugar be right around 100. Maybe it goes from 70 or 80 fasting, less than 90, up to 120s at the highest, 140s at the very highest. And whatever you're eating, if it spikes it higher than that, don't eat it. Exercise, or eat protein and fiber beforehand and see if that dampens that spike. So you don't have to give up everything altogether, but you can choose timing that's going to make less of an effect for that insulin. And of course, that's going to store less fat and ultimately reduce your risk of diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, all the things that we don't want. So overall, I'm gonna give it a really good grade. This thing's been great. No problems with it. It's easy. It doesn't set off alarms overnight or have any annoying noises relatively inexpensive, great educator. We're definitely recommending it for our patients. You can go to the website below and order one for yourself, give it a try. So I hope that's some helpful information about CGMs. If you learned something today, uh, don't forget we do see patients in person. If you're interested in joining our weight loss program, we do use GLP-1 agonists for patients who qualify. Those are drugs like semaglutide or terzepatide. We're located in Houston, Texas, but if you live in Texas, we can prescribe medicine for you. If you don't, we can still see you in a coaching capacity. So wherever you live, check out our website below, and we can't wait to see you. And I can't wait to see you next week. Mm -hmm.